סלאם, שלום, פיס אגיין. This time, סלאם from Sarasota, Florida, USA. I'm so happy I'm here, and I was happy to be there. I know here's more quiet, <laughs> more safe, but everywhere is so beautiful. You need to prepare yourself to be in your time, in your place. And we will continue our journey. I see the, uh, uh, the globe in Astrid's uh, uh, Zoom. I think this is our journey. This is our journey to get to get to everywhere inside the hearts of all of the people all around the world. And uh, uh, just yesterday we say a very important thing. We say, you know what is the meaning of Salam, the sixth name of God? Salam is equality. Not only peace, it's equality, it's love, it's uh, uh, connection. And here is the equality, love, connection between all of us here in this beautiful arch of light and love. And as we know, we do a, a great process for to get to the heart of the world, Jerusalem, to be there and to touch it, to love and to hug sometimes or always, then each time we have a new great person to pray for all of us. And we know that all of you are, you are great. And we know that you pray with us. You will ask us, how do you know? We feel the whispering, the beautiful whispering of your prayers without words. We get and we got the energy of your light coming to our hearts, then this is the connection of love. And today we have a great person with us. He's behind the scene all the time. He's doing his work behind everything. He didn't say, hey, I'm here like me. I'm here, say, all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> many people, you know, uh, do these things. This is the, these are the, the holy people that we know. Today, I will not make a big introduction because he's well known to all of us. He's a great person from Florida. He's my neighbor. And uh, uh, his name, the first letter of his name is Ted Bronston. I'm so happy to invite you, Ted to um, make the prayer for all of us. It's yours, please. Well, thank you. It's a delight to see everybody today. Salam, shalom, and peace be with all of you as we seek to make more peace in the world. And uh, my good friend, uh, Ghassan, called me one hour and 10 minutes ago <laughs> and said, can you uh, prepare a little something for today? And so I've been thinking a lot about the Psalms and the power of the Psalms to heal the soul. And it's a wonderful connection between all the Abrahamic faiths because the book of Psalms is used not only by Christians and Jews, also it is named in the Quran as Zabur and credited to David and acknowledged as a book of God. And, um, and uh, the Baha'is, who I also have affiliation with, um, also use uh, the text in prayer and a way of connecting with God, finding a balm, a healing for the soul. And uh, this is what uh, we need in this world today. We have so many wounds. We need a salve, you know, to rub on it, something to, that has curative power, it has healing power. So i just like very quickly, uh, for the time that we have, to talk about David and the aspects of David as peacemaker. There are a couple of beautiful stories in the Jewish Bible, in the Tanakh, that uh, tell of David's role as peacemaker. And uh, just to briefly set the context for this, um, King Saul had been anointed by the prophet Samuel to be king over Israel and uh, very quickly lost God's favor through some acts of rebellion and different things. Um, Samuel was told to anoint another king to replace Saul was going to be David. 
So David, as a young boy, was anointed as king, but he wasn't king yet. And uh, Saul didn't know about the anointing of David. But uh, David showed his courage and he went to the camp of Saul and uh, his army. And Saul had a need. Saul, the, the uh, text tells us that the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. I'm reading translation from uh, 1 Samuel. And an evil spirit tormented him. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays music well and bring him to me. And so whenever this sp bad spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. And then relief would come to Saul. Saul would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. So here is David knowing that he's going to be a rival with Saul for the kingship of the land. And yet he has the courage to go into Saul's presence and to do good to him. Now think about this as a peacemaker. You know, what can we do for our enemies that will bring them joy, that will bring them comfort? And what a beautiful example this is of, of peacemaking, a tool that we can use. So um, a little bit later, uh, the rivalry intensified between Saul and David. Saul learns that David had been anointed as king to replace him, and he got angry, and he sought to hunt David down with his army and to kill him. But David continued to show compassionate. And the story is that uh, Saul and his men began to search, again reading from 1 Samuel. And David was told about it, and he went down to the rocks and stayed in the desert. And so Saul was going along on one side of the mountain, and David, his men, on the other. And David was hurrying to get away from Saul. And Saul and his forces were closing in on David to capture him. And so Saul was told that uh, David was in the desert of En Gedi, which is, of course, by the Dead Sea, a beautiful spring there um, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, Salt Sea. And so Saul took 3,000 able-bodied men from all of Israel and went out to look for David near the crag of the wild goats, which is what Gedi means in Gedi. And so there was a cave there, and Saul went into the cave to rest. But David and his men were hidden far back in the same cave. And so the men said, David's men said to him, this is the day that the Lord spoke of when I will give your enemy into your hand to deal with him as you wish. And so David crept up unnoticed and he cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Notice he didn't kill him, even though he had the opportunity. He just left a little mark to show that he had been there by cutting off um, a piece of his robe. And so when Saul left the cave and went his way, and David came out and called to him and says, my lord, the king. And Saul looked back and David bowed down and prostrated him with his face. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to your men who say David is bent on harming you? So David gave Saul his oath of loyalty. Again, what a beautiful example of peacemaking. See, we have the chance to kill our enemy, but we don't take advantage of it. We do something that's conciliatory to bring together. And so it's so beautiful to reflect upon this example of, of David as a peacemaker and see how we can take the same principles, the same attitudes, and apply them in our own work in the Holy Land. So it's interesting in the book of Psalms, there is one particular Psalm that apparently was written about this incident in the cave. And it's Psalm number 57. I'd like to share parts of it with you now. And uh, it's entitled, Do Not Destroy, to the chief musician, set to Do Not Destroy, a melody of David when he fled from Saul into the cave. And so the Psalm reads this way. Be merciful to me, O oh God, be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. In the shadow of your wings, I will make refuge until all these calamities pass by. I will cry out to God the Most High, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send me from heaven and save me. 
He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and truth. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches into the heavens, your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above the earth. So again, reflecting upon David, his trust in God to even put himself in what might have been dangerous situations to pursue a course of peace and reconciliation with his enemy. And so uh, I would just like to conclude very briefly with a uh, quote from uh, Baha'u'llah from the Baha'i writings that uh, speaks to this issue of unity and, and peacemaking. The well-being of mankind, its peace and security are unattainable until its unity is firmly established. And again, the well-being of mankind, its peace and security are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. And again, the well-being of humankind, its peace and security are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. May it be so in our day. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. And thank you to be with us in this small uh, notice to you. <laughs> And, you know, in, in the Holy Land, usually when we prepare, we ask some person and another person to be, instead if there's no. Today, the two, they canceled. <laughs> then we went to the Holy person. This is your time. This is your place. Thank you for this so deep prayer, Ted. And I think we... Uh, uh, got all of the holiness to continue our process for praying to the Holy Land and all over the world. Thank you all for coming to be as one, one heart to be with us. We love you all and see you inshallah next vigil with another energy, with another light and love. Thank you so much and see you soon. Salam, shalom, peace.